September at the shore. Many of us love it here. Local summer September. We had plenty of great days to enjoy the beach. That being said, coming at the expense of those great days was drought here. Lots of dry weather throughout the month of September continued and even worse in drought across the Garden State and in South Jersey. In addition to that, we also had another month that was well above average with temperatures over the past 125 or so years of record keeping. So a great month to be at the beach. Still plenty to talk about here, and we have it all for you at New Jersey State Climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson. The Something in the Air podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Something in the Air podcast brought to you by the Press of Atlantic City in conjunction with our friends at Stockton University. It is the first Wednesday of October episode, and we are here with New Jersey State Climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson. Dr. Dave Robinson, um, we saw each other at the Rutgers football game a couple of weeks ago when they won, and then we didn't see each other last Saturday against Iowa, and they lost. So do you see a correlation here? Because I'm starting to see a correlation here. Well, I can see we were smart. I'm smart enough to only go to winning football games. Ah, <laughs> okay. Just go to losing ones. Now, I'm just let's a hope sucker. that's the case. Let's yeah. hope that's the case next week with Nebraska, where we're that's both correct. There. That is correct. I, I've never week, been this week right well this week yeah so and, and you know on a serious note we are recording this on september 29th and we make that distinction because we're going to talk about drought we're going to talk a little bit about ian but by the time you hear this things could change with drought and ian's remnants will already have been past us by that point so just throwing it out there in the beginning we're still going to have a lot to talk about in this episode that'll be relevant but we do want to get that out of the way first um, we'll just talk about Ian real quick, um, what it's done so far. Um, really tremendous, I mean, tremendous devastation, unfortunately. Went ashore as a major hurricane just around Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, Dr. Robinson, the one thing that, that really stuck out to me was just how slow this storm was moving and how strong it was. You know, you think about Sandy, you know, Sandy wasn't moving seven, eight, nine miles an hour when it came ashore. And this was a major hurricane, Ian, when it came um, across as landfall. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this was a large storm as well. It yeah. was, it was slow moving and large and compare that with a hurricane that hit that same area 18 years ago, Charlie. And that was like a small buzzsaw that came zipping through was much smaller in extent. So it had less of a storm surge. It had devastating winds, but in a much more localized area and didn't drop nearly as much rain. So that was the, you know, this was the papa bear. That was the, the baby bear. But they each had their ferocity to them. Um, you know, compare that to what Fiona did at the end of uh, 10 days ago or so. Yeah. I mean, it just took off and shot up past Bermuda and up to uh, Nova Scotia and up towards the Arctic. And, you know, it transitioned, morphed into a, an extratropical system, but it was zipping along um, at, what, 25, 35 miles It was 35, hour. yeah, 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 absolutely, by the time it got there. So. Yeah, so this, this was just a recipe for disaster with Ian, and, and tragically and, and sadly, that's what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk about Ian and, and a little bit when we talk a little bit more about our next topic, which is drought. And that's why I want to lead off with here. Um, you know, as of September 29th, I believe it's 6.3 million people out of the 8.8 .8 in New Jersey are in drought here. Um, you are uh, one of the main people who puts this map together. Um, and uh, we did notice in this update a little more of an extension of drought in the southern half of the state, but also a reduction in drought in the northern part of the state. And I don't believe we talked about this in the last episode, but we did enter severe drought, which is the, we'll call it a level two of four drought here. Uh, and the last time we saw that was in the fall of 2010 in southeastern New Jersey. And we're seeing that now in most of Cape May in part of Cumberland County. So with all that being said, I'm just going to turn it over to you. You're obviously the one who's putting this together in conjunction with the drought monitor and, you know, saying what we're in here. 
Yeah, uh, just remind everyone, there's a lot of parameters that are evaluated as we make a decision of what category of drought it might be. And the ultimate decision is by the lead author for the week that rotates among several federal uh, agencies. And they try to look at all the indices and they try to merge together everything at the borders of the states because a lot of the input they get is from individual states. Uh, um, New Jersey does it individually. Uh, New England and New York has their own drought emergency warning system funded by NOAA. The Middle uh, Mid-Atlantic is one of two regions in the country that don't have a, what we call a dues drought early warning system. The other is the lower Mississippi Valley. Uh, so we're kind of on our own. Um, but I, I, in consultation with weather service personnel, hydrologists, uh, with New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, um, drought, drought team, um, I make recommendations to the lead author. And it's this week, the central Jersey, the lower part of central New Jersey, northern part of southern New Jersey, how you want, ever you want to call it, Monmouth, Northern Ocean County and such. Um, that's where the precip has kept missing for the last six, eight weeks. Prior to that, it had been a little further north into Somerset, Little Hunterdon, and northern Middlesex and Union. Now that area has benefited from rainfall in the last four to six weeks. So that one we backed off on. That had been in D2, something you might see every 10 to 20 years. Um, and we've backed off there. But down in South Jersey, it's interesting. We've kept some D2 in parts of Cumberland and, and Cape May. Um, D1 elsewhere is something seen every five to 10 years. Uh, in part, not just because of the rainfall um, or the lack thereof, but the groundwater, it's been longer there. You go back to last spring, Mar Mar last February, March, early spring, and South Jersey was in the worst shape. And it did a little bit better during the summer, but the groundwater hasn't responded because of the duration of it there. Up in the north, the duration really began kind of early midsummer. So there's all these different variables, time, space, uh, groundwater, surf stream flow, um, and, and rainfall totals. So, yeah. you know, South Jersey, we have to be a little bit more patient as we come out of this because of the groundwater reliance to the south. Up north, things recharge a little faster, the streams, the groundwater, and, and such. So it's, it's, you know, that's why this is a map done by committee. It's not done with one index or uh, of precipitation, for instance. And, and then you have to even have to look seasonally. You know, in the summer, you have to look at high temperatures that can help dry things out further. Now that we're in a transitional season, not only do consumers use less water and plants use less water, there's less evaporation generally. So some ra rainfall goes a little further in, in the cool season for the year. So that's what makes drought so really interesting. You know, it, uh, something I was looking on the drought monitor website um, is that this area is in what is called short-term impacts as well as long-term impacts. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us what the difference between those are besides the obvious one is short, one is long, and, and how, you know, is it different to get out of a short-term impact drought as opposed to a long-term impact drought? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and it helps to sum up my babbling earlier on. The short term would be a, a flash kind of drought like we saw central and north this summer where you get the soils dry out, the fire danger rises, um, your streams and groundwater begin to fall, at, particularly in a hot summer environment but you can snap out of it generally quicker because you haven't been in it as long. So the long-term um, indices um, take longer to rebound. Whereas the long-term would be what we're seeing in South Jersey, where it hasn't been any more extreme at a given point, but it's been more persistent. Uh, and, in, and partly it's associated with rebounding the groundwater and with the sandy soils of South Jersey, there's a lot of water that can be in the ground, but it takes, and as such, it takes longer to, to replenish it. 
uh, as we get more normal uh, rainfall uh, gotcha. situations arise. So, but yeah, that's a great question. Long term versus short term. Yeah, you know, and and like we were saying at the top, this is September 29th when we're recording this. Um, Ian and what happens with the remnants of Ian overhead uh, could certainly make a difference. Um, wh what are like what what's a realistic expectation in terms of drought and what Ian's remnants could bring for us here? Meaning, is it possible we could pull out of drought as rec as quickly as the Thursday after recording this, which is October? Where am I at here? Over six. <laughs> yeah. Um, generally, with the drought categories, you move one category a week. It takes a, it would take an Ida to pull up two categories, for instance, because again, it takes time to recharge the groundwater. But I would say, if if it's an inch in South Jersey um, from Ian, that's an average weekly rainfall. So we're not going to see much change. Um, but if we were to get three to four or five inches out of Ian, which would you know be some quick hitting flooding, but not major flooding, even North Jersey, where they get three to four inches of rain, you wouldn't see rivers starting to flood. You'd see some flash flooding, some stream flooding. Um, so that would be incredibly valuable. And I would almost say immediately, we'd see it go down. Uh, and, and it has to finish by 8 a.m. on Tuesday, because that's yes. the drop dead date <laughs> for precipitation for the map that comes out Thursday. But Ian should behave like that. Right. So if we see three inches of rain in South Jersey between now and then, even if we haven't seen the groundwater totally start to really rebound, we can be sure that it's going to uh, and probably back off a category. Uh, but we're not going to get out of it overnight. Got it. You know, the, the Tuesday thing, I think. Uh caught a lot of people off guard back uh, around the week of Labor Day, where we had all that rain on Tuesday and the map comes out on Thursday and there was no change. And some people are like, what the heck's going on? But it, it's the map comes out on Thursday. Tuesday is how good the data is, is good for here. Um, yeah. And I might add that we're not, we're asked by the National Integrated Drought Information System not to look ahead and say, oh, it's going to rain, so we'll change it. We have to ignore the forecast. We have to have blinders on and just look till 12 Z, uh, 12 Greenwich Mean Time, which is eight in the morning Eastern um, in the summer um, uh, to for the rain to fall. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up with the drought talk here. We'll, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about precipitation on the other side of this, and then I want to get into temperatures. We'll talk a little bit more about hurricane season and fall foliage. You're listening to the Something in the Air podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Something in the Air podcast. It is our September monthly weather roundup, and at the top of every month, we have New Jersey State climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson, uh, also my birthday buddy and weather dad, here to talk to us more about just how darn dry uh, it's been over the past couple of months. Now, I just wanted to quickly wrap up on drought here by saying September precipitation was actually about average, but a lot of that came in one day. Yeah, I mean, it came on shortly after Labor Day uh, on the on the on the sixth, where two four inches of rain fell around the area, and then you know spigot was turned off. You know, it's amazing at at the airport, Lang City Airport, uh, and, and the marina each had two point eight six inches of rain on yeah. the sixth, and since then, the only time the airport's gotten above a tenth of an inch of rain is on the seventh. The next day was a continue on with 0.14. Yeah. And the only other one was 0.23 inches on the 22nd. Um, the Marina had 0.31 on the 22nd and they had a shower of 3,100s on the 11th, but it was like feast or, or famine uh, in, in September, which has led to some lovely weather. Right. Um, oh yeah. But we haven't seen a lot of rain in quite a few weeks now with waiting on what Ian might provide. Um, you know, 
sometimes you get it all, you, you never get it spread out perfectly evenly. If you did, we get about an inch of rain a week, uh, most weeks of the year. You'd, you could take a few off um, uh, here and there, but you know that's that's the way it happens sometimes and and we'll we'll see if that's going to be the case um should we get a couple of inches of rain from Ian <laughs> will the rest of October go dry yeah we might have the same story when we do our October uh weather roundup yeah. here but uh, but you know yeah. Joe it really vary again it's 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 a summer ish month oh, it mm-hmm. seems like summer's getting pushed later into the fall all the time sure, and with yeah. that variability Egg Harbor Township caught 6.23 inches of rain this past month, yet Hamilton uh, Hamilton had 2.71. So in Atlantic County, you had more in a factor of two. And the same thing in Cape May County. Ocean City, 6.3. Sea Isle City, just down the coast, um, 2.69. Well, Lower Township, a little uh, a little inland had 2.53. So again, a factor of more than two. Uh, and the same thing up in Ocean, where Lacey was on the low end, Lacey Township 1.81, and Long Beach Township 4.03. Yeah. Um, so some places did better than others, but overall, it kind of averaged out down right. in uh, the southeast corner of the state, and, and the state as a whole, for that matter. Sure, sure. Let's uh let, let's switch over to temps here. Yeah. Um, and you were saying lovely September weather, local summer. I'll tell you what, what a month it's been. I was on the beach in Ocean City on September 20th, and I was doing a boat and beach report. And you could have thought it was a Tuesday in June as opposed to a Tuesday in September. There were so many people at the beach. Water temps have been warm too. That, that that's another thing. Um, but it, it's been at least warm and bright on a number of days here. Um so yeah. where are we at? Where are we at for the month? I mean, that's where we're, what we're seeing um, in, in the last couple of decades for that yeah. matter. Uh, we're averaged right in the Atlantic City area, just a tad above normal for the month. And I think we're going to see that it was the warmer days and some cooler nights when we weren't getting the clouds and the rain. Um, the, the state and South Jersey uh, as a whole um, a little more than a degree above normal for the month. And that normal is based on 1991 to 2020. So if we say we have 128 September's worth of data for the state and South Jersey, and you said it was a degree above normal, you'd say, well, maybe it ranked 50th warmest or something. It's the 13th warmest right now, preliminary numbers for the state. And for the South, the 14th warmest. Uh, tied with a couple of years. But that just shows you how warm this last 30-year period was, where we talk about the degree above normal, compared to what we had in the pre- prior 97, 98 years. Yep. Yeah, and fall has really, I mean, you talk to everybody. I talk to people. I had a talk last week, and people were saying, you know, September just feels like an extra month of summer. And the other month that I think sticks out, at least to me, is December almost feeling like another month of like late fall for us here um, across the area. And uh, that is certainly, um, you know, just kind of a little change in seasons that that I feel like we've been seeing and other people have told me about as well here. Um, you know, what what can we say about is there anything to be said, you know, on a research level in terms of, you know, seasons and quotes actually kind of shifting or expanding? Yeah, I, I think we can talk about the summer expanding. Uh, that could be associated with water temperatures staying warm, not yeah. just warming up the coast, but even going inland. But it's interesting that December, when we looked at the la- the new 30-year means, was w- much warmer than the previous 30-year means from 81 to 2010, but not November. November is the one month that hasn't warmed that much from the <laughs> 80s period yeah. to the teens. Right. Um, and, and so, but again, that will extend the fall. And that's one that really has a scratch in our heads. I think it just has to do with some persistent circulation patterns that have delivered some early, late fall, early winter cool weather in November on multiple occasions. But by the time you get to December, it just can't snap <laughs> into a winter gear. It's still right. thinking it's back in November. Yeah. 
And uh, I, for one, I, I'm on the record as saying this, um, temperatures between 45 and 65 can just like go in the trash can. It like, it just be above 65 or just be like winter cold. I don't want to be in this purgatory. I, I don't, I don't want it. I want to either warm enough to be outside or cold enough to think that maybe one day it's going to snow in the next five or seven days. You know, that, that, that's me. Some people love the fifties. I think you, I think you're a fifties and low sixties kind of guy. Am I, am I correct in saying that? Are you talking about my, you know, when I was growing up? In no, I was, no, absolutely not. No. I, um, I, I like all the seasons. I, I honestly do like all the seasons. I'm not a fan of heat and humidity. Uh, and I wouldn't want to live in an area that was 15 or 20 degrees year round. Uh, so yeah. that's what I love about Jersey. I was actually talking to my class about that some today. How uh, We have the benefit, I think, of having the four distinctive seasons. Um, but yeah, I have no problem putting on a jacket. I don't need a parka or a t-shirt. Uh, I, I can wear a jacket once in a while, Joe. Gotcha. Well, I know you went to Scotland and when was it? June, in, July? In July. July, um, right? I think you said it was, in the, it was in the 50s at some point, right? When you were there? Yeah, yeah, it was showery 50s up in Scotland, but we arrived in London when it was 104 degrees and they shattered <laughs> all-time records. So we saw... The summer and, and the spring slash fall. We saw March and we saw right. an incredibly unusual July. Yeah. Man, the wacky weather. When you arrive, watch out weather. You got to love it. Um, I, just wrapping up temps here. I didn't, I, I don't think we set any records cool or warm here. I think it was um, just kind of within the realms of what this new normal is for us here. Once you have something yeah, we else, popped, we popped a couple 90 degree t days inland early uh, the first couple days of the month. And a little when we got mid month, we had a couple stations hit 90 yeah. on one day. Yeah. But that's indicative of what we're seeing. We're not shattering daily record high temperatures. It's the persistence of the warmth. And anybody who's listening to this podcast is probably bored stiff hearing me talk about that again, because that's what it is. It's the persistence of the warmth. It's not necessarily the extremes that we've seen uh, yeah. become more common. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So that wraps up precip and temps for September. Let's talk about two other topics. Um, hurricane season. We did just talk about Ian, of course. Um, hurricane season, uh, when we had our last discussion in, uh, uh, for the first Wednesday, of September, it was pretty darn quiet. Uh, now it has not been pretty darn quiet. It's been pretty darn loud. We had, uh, Fiona, we had Gaston, we had Hermine, we had Ian, um, even at the time of talking, there's another system that could be floating around out there. So, um, I don't know, just any thoughts on hurricane season, um, floor is yours. Yeah. A, a slow start no doubt uh, that was totally against what the forecasts were or the outlooks were for the season. It certainly picked up. Uh, we know that there was high pressure uh, at various levels of the atmosphere uh, over the Atlantic basin in July and August, and that inhibits upward movement of air. Now the pressure fields lowered when we got into September, and that allowed some of these waves coming off of Africa and, and other disturbances to develop, uh, at least into weaker, milder uh, tropical systems, including one right. that hugged the African coast, very unusual. That was her mean. Um, and, and then, you know, the two big ticket items so far are Fiona, uh, yep. which was, mo you know, just horrific rains, more than wind. Um, in Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, uh, Dominican Republic, and then pounded um, as, uh, Maritime Canada. Uh, and then, of course, Ian. Um, whether Fiona will be a retired name, perhaps Ian, it's a slam dunk that we won't see another Ian in the future. It will be retired. Um, but there's still a lot of season to go. We're past the peak which is generally second into the third week of, of September. But it's not until we get to mid-October that the chances really are slim. But yeah, we've got the 30th anniversary, uh, 30, yeah. 10th anniversary yeah. of Sandy coming up, and that was October 29th. Yeah, I think for a lot of people in New Jersey, we probably don't think hurricane season tapers off until maybe November after what happened with Sandy. Yeah. 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 And 10-year um, anniversary, of course, coming up. 
Um, geez, I, I mean, it doesn't, I don't know. I mean, does it feel like 10 years? I guess it kind of does, but it's just odd. Like, you know, and, and what, what strikes me um, is that, you know, there's people who are 16, 17 years old, 15 years old. They probably don't even really remember Sandy, but maybe I'm just getting old now. And now I can say back in my day. Yeah, well, you know, for me, 10 years is nothing compared to <laughs> all the years. No, but um, I've talked to my students, an interesting point you make. The students I have right now who are generally 18, 19 to 21 or 22, this is probably, and, and the meteorology students at, at, at Rutgers, yeah. there's always this formative storm or whatever that piques the interest when they were younger. And it's, it's right now, it is, it, it's, it's Sandy, uh, for sure, for the most part. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you know, with you, it's another type of storm. With me, it was something else. Yeah, um, yeah everybody has their, their things. Each yeah. era has its storm. And yeah. so Sandy, but like, you're right, if they're 15 or so, borderline. I remember a hurricane when I was in kindergarten. Um, but then again, we've got infected with the weather and climate yeah. virus. Um, yeah, we got we we, we got the early. bug early. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, let's wrap up on a lighter note. Fall foliage. Um, I have already started to see. I don't want to say good amount, but decent amount of foliage. Um, drought has impacted things. I was just out with the New Jersey Forest Service, um, and they were saying the fall foliage season looks to be earlier than usual and also more muted. So not those big vibrant yellows and oranges and reds because drought has really starved it of its food source here. Um, what do you think? I wouldn't write it off completely because there's so many different, you know, certain trees, yes, the oaks versus the beaches versus uh, the maples. Um, South facing slopes, which is more of a Northern Jersey situation, got hammered with the sunlight and the drought. Um, you know, deep rooted plants would have done better uh, the shallow rooted ones have taken a hit. So I don't think it's going to hit, you know, the most vibrancy we've seen. Uh, depends a lot now how cool the nights get because some trees really shut down and respond best with cool nights as we get into late September and early, early October. Um, some are just photic sensitive, sensitive. The days are getting shorter, the daylight's getting shorter, and they shut down and they may ignore just how much water has been available. So uh, there's still hope for a, a decent season. But yeah, I, I do suspect it's not going to be, uh, you know, a top 10. Yeah, which, you know, again, there's always good foliage somewhere in New Jersey just as a whole. You know, might yeah, and, and you know, you've heard me say this before. If we get some sunny weekends, it's going to make the foliage look all the better as we go out looking at it. If we have some cloudy, rainy weekends, yeah. people don't get out or it's kind of a dull day, it's not going to look so good. So yeah. there's a, a lot of factors with foliage. It's funny, we come full, cir full circle. We talked about all the factors associated with drought. Yeah. Now we're talking all the factors associated with foliage yeah. and some of it with foliage is in the eye of the beholder sure and the timing of that yeah i mean look i mean just on a side note our short summer weekend weather report card fantastic thank you for your a that you gave us uh back in i think it was july um, yeah that was an easy grader uh, <laughs> so anybody who's listening to this who's at Rutgers right now you gotta take his classes easy grader right there a is across the board uh, uh no but a different story. It's an easy grading for me, uh, you know, for the short summer weekend weather. All right, everybody, signing off. I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. He's New Jersey State climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson. We will see you back with another weather roundup as we go into the first Wednesday of November. Here until then, everybody, uh, take care. We're going to have a special winter forecast episode for you sometime in the month of October, so you can check that out here as well. Talk to you soon.